First graders, for reading time today, we are going to be getting back into books and talking about how to actually read, especially when you get stuck on a tricky word. You have this little blue sheet. I know mine is backwards, but in just a minute, I'll have it right. I can't make my camera stop flipping. So let me switch over to this screen. Um, remember, you have a blue sheet like this too. And here's what it says. I can help myself with the tricky part. And the key there is help myself. Now, today, if you have a highlighter and a pencil and this blue sheet, those would be great things to have for this lesson. So if you need to pause it a minute, you can do that and go get those items. The blue sheet with the reading strategies and maybe a highlighter like this. And of course, maybe a pencil like this. So I'll give you a second to make sure that you have those items. Okay, hopefully you have unpaused now and you are ready to go. Well, right away, I want you to take your highlighter and I want you to highlight a couple of words. Help myself, in the, right in the directions. Help myself. Now when you highlight, it's really not like coloring. You're simply just kind of swiping. And sometimes I have to swipe a couple of times to make it work. But the idea here is, is we don't want to go asking for help unless we've tried and tried to help ourselves, okay? When we're reading a tough word. All right, the next thing I want you to do is definitely highlight this first one. It says, look at the word, okay? It doesn't have it here, but really it should say like red words. Some words are red words, and when you look at them, like maybe the word the, you just know it. You don't have to sound it out. You don't even have to try that hard. You just know it because you've been practicing them. Uh, then I want you to highlight this one too, blend the sounds. Now, if you don't have a highlighter, you could use a yellow crayon um, or a yellow marker. I also want you to put a little star by these, okay? Now, when I say a star, I mean like a snowflake star. You make an X, okay? And then you just cross through just like that, okay? I'm gonna do the other one too. Make an X and then cross right through it. Now, here's the thing, while you're doing that, we don't use all of the strategies all of the time, right? So that is something, um, I want you to understand is we're going to be practicing different strategies today. We're probably not going to use all of them. Maybe. The last one I want you to highlight and star right now is on the very bottom. Check the picture. Okay. These three strategies are going to help us figure out many words today. And I have a book to practice. I'm going to make my X put a line right through the middle. So these are the three reading strategies that we are going to be using a ton to help us to read some books. All right, here's the one that we're going to read today. It says level A on there. I think we can do it. It says, uh oh, I don't know that first word. I wonder if I can sound it out. Ah, oh, by the way, I looked at the word, right? Now I'm blending the sounds. So let's blend the sounds, just like we do with the blending board. We touch the letters, we give the sounds. Ah, now we blend them. Off, maybe like off. Ooh, I don't need to sound that one out. It's a red word. Two, off, two. Now, I don't know if you already were doing this, but I am checking the picture. Checking the picture is going to help me. Look at in the picture, you can see he's wearing a backpack. And I know when kids are walking up the sidewalk with a backpack, they're probably going to school. Oh, oh, oh. I think they're going to school. Look, it's probably off to school. And those letters kind of match the, the word school and the picture matches. And it basically just, all, it all makes sense. In fact, I'm not gonna highlight it right now, but this one just says, think what makes sense. I mean, if something doesn't sound right or doesn't look right, it's probably not right. There. 
we've already been using three strategies just to read the title. This is the title page. Let's get started. Now I'm definitely checking the picture and I'm definitely looking at the words and I can start reading. I know I, and we can blend these words if we don't know them, am. So I am on a, and I bet you checked the picture and I bet you blended the sounds. You're probably faster than me. B, us, bus. Good job. I believe in rereading a lot. So even though we got all those words, we didn't really read it smoothly. So let's go back and read it. I want you to read it with me. Ready? Begin. I am on a bus. Good job. Let's move on and look at this one. Now, this one's a little harder in the picture, but let's try it. I am in a hmm. K. Now, I can check the picture and I need to think about what makes sense. The author said this girl is in something. Well, what is she in? Is she in a pizza box? No. Is she in a house? No. I see a seat belt. Maybe she's in a car. Does this word make sense to be car? I am in a car. We can use these reading strategies to help us. These are great reading strategies. The next one says, ooh, I am on a, now maybe you don't know this word. Maybe you can check the picture. Maybe you can see the details of her helmet and that she's on a bike, right? But we could also give the sounds. B, I, K, B, I, K, E, B, I, K, E. Well, one other strategy I want you to highlight now, and this I think is a great strategy to be keeping in mind, is this one right here. So grab your blue sheet and your highlighter or crayon, and I want you to highlight this one. Try a different sound, okay? Try a different sound. Vowels, remember, they can make short sounds like ah, eh, i, ah, uh, but they can also make long sounds. Vowels can say their names, a, e, i, o, u. I'm going to put a star by this one also, an x with a line through it. Okay, now I'm going to move that out of the way and see if we can figure this word out. Instead of I for that vowel, I know that I can say I. B, Ike, bike. And that's a magic E, which we'll talk about another time. And it matches the picture. It makes sense. Now let's reread. I am on a bike. I feel like a great reader. The, these strategies help me to feel like a great reader. Check this one out. This one's challenging, just gonna warn you. Here we go. I am on a... Now parents, I'm gonna interrupt this reading for just a minute. Parents, this message is for you because I know often you are um, working with your child on this stuff too. Please, 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 please understand that the longer you wait, the better. If your child is struggling on a word, um, one or two or three seconds isn't long enough. I know it's painful and it can be really difficult, but like 10 seconds might be, maybe then it's time to kind of start helping them. But their brain needs time to, to think and remember these different strategies and what to do so that they learn to help themselves. So when they do ask for help, you can certainly give them help, but instead of just telling them the word, maybe remind them, all right, well, have you blended the sound? And then let's see it. Let's try it. T, er, a, in, tra, tra, in. Now, there are spelling rules 
about two vowels going walking. We're going to learn those kinds of things, but it's the beginning of first grade. So typically what we would remind them is this, try a different sound. Okay, so a, a doesn't always say a, it can say a. I am on a train. And maybe they'll figure out, maybe you'll figure out the word is train. Now, if you look in the picture, this might not be that helpful to you. Maybe you've never ridden on a train in a big city. Zealand doesn't have public transportation like this with trains and buses and subways. So they might not have any schema. We call that schema. It's just stuff you know. You might not know anything about that unless they've visited a big city like Chicago. Let's reread that so that we have some good fluent reading. Ready, begin. I am on a train. Good, good, good. We're almost done. Uh oh. Hmm. I am on a sk at. Now, with the sounding, with the blending of the sounds, I don't know if you can tell, but our blending board is usually three sounds, the vowel in the middle, the vowels in the middle. In a long word like this, what I would recommend doing is taking your fingers, right? And this is a reading strategy, break the word apart. We'll practice that a little bit longer um, another day. So I'm not gonna highlight it and start it just yet. But just know that it might be better to just to sound the first part of the word where there's a vowel in the middle. Sk at scat. And again, that might not make sense, but we know that a can also say a, so we can try it with a long sound. Sk eight. And I know you guys are super smart, you kids, and you've already looked at the picture and you already know it's on a skateboard or she's on a skateboard. So we probably figured out that word. Let's reread it with fluency. I am on a skateboard. Next page. I am on a, uh oh, we have the same thing here. Sk -at. Hmm. Checking the picture, checking the picture. Does anybody recognize what they're on? You probably know that's a scooter. Now look at the word scooter. Does it make sense? Sk ooh, two O's can say ooh, scooter, scooter. Yep. Let's finish this up and wrap this up. Last one. Uh oh, it breaks the pattern. I am w. Now, it's tricky when authors do this. They do this on purpose. They want to trick you a little bit, see if you can figure out the word. Let me just give you a reminder, breaking the word apart, sometimes there's a part of a word you might know. If you look at the end of this word, you have ing, ing, which might be a part you learned in kindergarten. So I am ing. Now we're thinking about what makes sense. What is that boy doing? Is he jogging? Is he skipping? Is he running? Is he walking? Well, he seems to be walking. Does walking make sense? What? Elk. Walking? Well, it's close. And if walking makes sense, it's probably right. Reading is very difficult. Reading is a very tricky thing to do. There are so many different ways to spell words. It's a very difficult thing to learn how to do. Eventually, it starts to go faster and easier and smoother. And these reading strategies, they will help you. Good? Now, this was a little bit of practice using strategies for reading. For your independent reading time, you are going to be doing that in uh, Epic, or if you have books at your level at home, you can do that. I know a lot of kids have books at home, but they are not always at their level. They're more like books dad or mom would read to you not books you can read to self. Normally, Epic looks like this. And if this is the symbol you're looking for right here. It's the graph that says F and P. If you click that, 
you can choose. And I would recommend, I mean, you know yourself maybe better than I know you right now, maybe starting with these A, B, and C levels. And if it's if it's going really well, maybe move up to B, right? So I'm going to pick maybe an A book. I like my bike. And that's how you do it. So you find your levels, that F and P with the graph. Well, I'm going to wrap up. I think you know what to do. Um, follow the directions and seesaw, and you'll know that you have to uh, record your voice reading for about a minute. Uh, good luck. I can't wait to hear you read.